My name is Michelle. I'm hoping that you looked at my other EKG videos. Today we're going to look at the EKG machine, or actually the monitor that, that will read an EKG for us. So this is a fairly new machine. It's called the LifePak 20. There are other biphasic monitors um, that you can find in your hospital or in your facility. Uh, this one is very nice. It does have an AED attached to it, so that's very convenient. Some of them will actually even have a pacemaker as well. So that's an added addition that may or may not be on your monitors. But it's always good to know your monitor and to know what it can and cannot do. So for example, we're gonna look at this machine. When you come upon it, it will look just like this. It does have paddles, but it also will have an adapter for pads. And that's very important that it's kept near the machine and secure as well. Because pads are much more efficient than the paddles are for uh, monitoring, pacing, doing defibrillation, synchronized and unsynchronized. Pads are much better. And that'll be another lesson for us too. So with the monitor, of course, I'm gonna turn it on. And it's very nice that when you do turn it on, it's in an AED mode, enabling you to defibrillate the patient if necessary. But if I just really want to monitor the patient at this time, I'll need to open the door and that enables the practitioner to see the rhythm on the patient. When I do open it up, it almost looks like a flat line and I might get nervous at first, but I realize that it's in the paddle mode. Paddles and pads are the same mode. So it's looking for pads or it's looking for a paddle. If I have the EKG leads on the patient, which I do now, I will put it um, in lead two. Lead two is the best um, lead to use because it gives you the best upright pictures that you can find enables you to see the P, Q, R, S, and T much, much clearer than any other lead. I can also increase the size so it's easier to see. I can um, choose other parts of the menu. I can actually go into a menu, which would be options, and I can put in the patient's name and it gives you an alphabet. I could choose whether the patient has a pacemaker. I could print out information. It has um, archives. Um, it has a user test, which most practitioners use on the unit instead of doing a shock into the machine. You could use the user test, and the manufacturers recommend us to do that also. It's safer for the machine. Um, it has alarm volume. So the menu is very nice. If there's an event occurring, such as a code, I could press event, and it enables me to press the buttons, the menu button, on different items during a code. So if I press the event button, and it, I've given a patient an atropine, right this very minute, I'll press atropine. And it will store that information at this time. If I press event, it'll go through CPR, other drugs, I can go more, and it'll give me more drugs, including amiodarone, lidocaine, even TPA, transport. Um, most facilities will use a code sheet to document this information, but this is a way that we could document events at the time that it happens. If I were to have to um, cardiovert a patient, I would press um, one is on, we did that already. Two would be the energy select button. Most new machines come up at 200 enabling you to do an unsynchronized cardioversion. If I wanted to do a synchronized cardioversion, I would certainly be able to reduce my joules by pressing the down arrow or increasing my joules if necessary for the second or third time. There is also a charge button and you can hear it charges very quickly and it's asking me to push the button. So we'll simulate a shock by pushing the buttons and you can see the paper does start coming out on the side, which will tell me when the patient was defibrillated, at, uh, so what time, what date. If I did enter the information, like the patient's name, drugs that I have given, it will also print the rhythm out right after the defibrillation, so that's very nice. If I did want to do a synchronized cardioversion, there's one, two energy select, three is charge. I could press the sync button at any time and it will highlight the upstroke of the R wave. We usually do cardioversion in a fast rhythm when a patient is unstable. 
And when you deliver the energy for this patient, it usually is at a lesser amount of joules, 50 to 100 as an example. I could charge it up. And there's even a charge button right on one of your paddles as well. Two buttons to discharge the energy. And if you'll notice, the synchronizing went off. So if I did want to do another synchronization for the patient, if they're in a tachycardia or a rhythm like ventricular tachycardia with a pulse, I would have to press the sync button again. And it does flash on the R wave. There are other settings on here, like um, the AED Analyze. Remember I said when you turn on the machine, it's in the AED mode? I can also go now into a manual AED mode. And it's asking me to connect the cables for the pads. I don't have them connected right now. So it's a pretty smart machine. There is um, alarm selections uh, when you're in the monitoring mode. You could press print if you needed the EKG strip right now. You could also press code summary and it will print out all the information regarding the events that just occurred for this patient. Once you shut off the machine, it, however, it does not save that information. So keep the machine going until you get a readout of that. And you can always paste that into the patient's chart because it's very accurate with the time. And it gives you other leads, like lead one, two, three, and of course the paddles if I have the pads or paddle on. If I press the print button, again, it should stop the printing. And that's the AED defibrillator. So with the door closed, it's an automatic AED. Of course, you have to put the pads on and press analyze and deliver a shock, but the machine gives you many, many directions to do that. Whether the pads are not connected, the pads are not on. So it's a very nice machine. And this is where I would disconnect the paddles by turning the switch in the back and pulling. And I'd be putting the pads connector. There's an arrow. The arrow always faces upwards. And I push the device in. So that's a basic overview of your LifePak 20 or AED defibrillator. Thank you, and I'll see you in the other videos.